So uh, in preparation for some thermosiphon experiments, uh, two-phase thermosiphon experiments, uh, I had to build this dryer here. Uh, now it's a vapor compression dryer. It's just a uh, simple refrigeration circuit uh, using propane. Uh, there's a compressor that was robbed out of a uh, defunct uh, water cooler, uh, condenser out of a defunct ice machine. Uh, filter dryer I got at the uh, Habitat for Humanity Restore, brand new, got a couple of them, but pretty cheap. It was a nice find. Um, about nine or 10 feet of like 026 cap tube. I, it's a leftover from an old project. I just pulled it out, said, oh, that's about right, you know, and just threw it together. Um, and then there's about nine feet of quarter inch tubing uh, that's wrapped very firmly around this one inch pipe. Um, the uh, vacuum pump pulls through this gate valve here, uh, excuse me, um, ball valve. Uh, which hold vacuum really nicely. Uh, that works pretty well. Um, and then over here on the vacuum pump, we have a micron gauge, which I can pull this thing when it's empty much lower than this. Uh, but right now we're looking at about, what is that, 1650 millitor. So what, 1.65 uh, millimeters of mercury, which is pretty low. Um, now, <laughs> now, in terms of pulling a good vacuum, like on a refrigeration system, uh, you gotta go lower than that. But what's going on here is we have a piece of uh, copper down there. It's actually a one inch pipe that was flattened uh, from another project, had it laying around. And so I filled it full of methanol, uh, heat, uh, gas, gas line uh, de-icer, uh, antifreeze, whatever. Um, and I put some methanol in there and I hooked it up just to see if I could boil off some methanol and not destroy my vacuum pump oil. Um, and right now you can see it's about negative 10 Celsius. So that's pretty cool. Um, so what ought to be happening is it's actually drawing that, uh, this is the line right here, that the vacuum line runs back through, runs through the dryer. The one inch pipe is uh, filled full of those copper scrubbers. Uh, I don't have any right here. You can buy them at the dollar store. Uh, just to get a little more um, uh, surface area, make sure those those vapor molecules have to pass through all that. That should be good and good and frigid. Uh, the dryer runs at about negative 40 Celsius or something. Uh, about negative 38 right now. But yeah, usually around negative 40 Celsius. Um, so it should pretty much uh, uh, condense anything that's being passed through the dryer and avoid the uh, vacuum pump actually seeing it, having to pump it. So keeps the vapor pressure low. Uh, in that portion of the system makes my oil last longer um, and it also allows the vacuum pump to pull harder because uh, it's not handling so much vapor. Um, the dryer is taking care of a lot of that. It's kind of similar to having uh, a large amount of desiccant in line where the desiccant could take it up. Now I haven't uh, passed a lot of material through this dryer yet. I've mostly just used it for uh, messing around and uh, just testing the vacuum lines themselves. Uh, so I expect whenever I'm done with this and I shut that off, uh, that it should, uh, I should be able to drain some, some methanol out of that. But um, methanol carries a fair amount of latent heat, uh, three or 400 BTU per, per pound, um, as opposed to water, it's like 970. Um, but three or 400 per pound is, is quite a bit uh, compared to say something like propane, that's about a buck 40, buck 50 per pound. So that's pretty neat. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I would shut the compressor off and show you how much the uh, vacuum pump loads up. Um, and the, the vacuum pressure will rise considerably, but I want to finish pulling that methanol out and do the do a complete job. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to share that. I thought it was pretty neat that that worked so well and that is refrigerating nicely. It's very cold, very, very cold. There's a thermocouple strapped to it. Um, it might even be colder than negative 10, but probably is. This is just kind of hacked together. I'm about ready to go inside and I thought it'd be kind of neat little experiment to do. One of the few things that went well today. Uh, you can see I have a heat interchanger here on the uh, suction line. That's pretty important, especially for something small like this, where there's not a lot of heat load on this thing often. So um, 
we wrap the cap tube around there. Probably could uh, take this flare out now that I know that the cap tube length is fine. Uh, I could have done it originally and just uh, just brazed it right into the uh, the discharge line after the filter dryer and the condenser. Um, and I think when I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and finish wrapping the majority of it around the suction line. Prevents it from frosting the whole way back to the compressor. You can see it's pretty close right now. But uh, for this charge in it, it seems like it can it can run all day. I had this thing running today that there was you know frost like that big <laughs> around the quarter inch suction line. So um, yeah, any questions or something, or you know you want to build a filter dryer like this? Worked out really well. Uh, the tubing, the wrap that I did, the evaporator line around that uh, uh, one inch pipe. I did not wrap it directly around the pipe. I used the method that uh, some of these reflux distillation fellows will do. Um, I didn't have to build a whole apparatus. I just threw this together in a couple of minutes. Uh, that is the foot, threaded foot, probably off a refrigerator. Um, I just so happened this steel pipe is one and one eighth inch diameter, which is the uh, outside diameter, actual outside diameter, one inch copper pipe. So I just put this in, in here, chuck to chuck on my wood lathe. It didn't run the lathe. Um, I did all of this manually by hand. Uh, I took a piece of quarter inch tubing about nine feet long and I uh, put a little bend in the end of it, zip tied it to this. Um, this. This was after I filled it full of water and crimped and soldered the ends shut uh, so that it wouldn't uh, collapse on me. Anyway, and then I just hand rolled it around there. Worked really well, slid it off that pipe, slid it onto this pipe and then did the rest of the work, crimping and you know, filling full of copper mesh and crimping and and brazing and installing all the lines and stuff so anywho uh thanks for watching